you're in class, something doesn't make sense. So you ask a question, but the answer still isn't clear. When you go home, you Google it, maybe ask your friends and email your teacher, yet it just still doesn't make sense. Why is that? Why do other people seem to easily just get some math concepts that you just cannot get? Lots of people think it's just intelligence. Math is just for natural talents and geniuses. But like most students, you may be stuck at the first or second level of mathematical thinking. There are actually three levels of mathematical thinking that every student or every learner should aim for. And of course, each of those levels leads to different kinds of results. I know because I was once also really sucked at math, like in high school, and I really understand that feeling. But later I become pretty good and really enjoyed studying math and actually got a math and engineering degree from an Ivy League school. And I have always had a hard time explaining what exactly changed. Until recently, I read about this study and encountered this model that I think explains everything really well. At the end of this video, you will see which level you're usually operate at and how you can reach the next level. And I think you might be surprised by which level you're at. You will see why. Let's get into it. So level one is called the trial and error. At this level, you may rely on examples, guesswork, and experimentation. And you may accept a statement as true if it works for a couple cases. For example, you check two plus four equals to six, two plus six equals to eight, and four plus six equals to 10. You have the conclusion of, looks like adding two even numbers gives an even number. And then you accept this is true just because you know you tried and it worked in these cases. This is actually pretty common in exams for multiple choices questions. Even without how to actually answer the question with set solutions, we can often use trial and error to find the correct answers. For example, question, which of the following is a solution to x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals to zero? And we have A, B, C, D for options. Instead of actually try to solve this equation, you can just plug in each of those answers. Like you try A, you get one minus five plus six equals to two, which is not right. And then you try B, you got four minus 10 plus six, which equals to zero and it works. So B is the correct answer. And then we move on to the second level, which is pattern recognition. At this level, you notice regularities and you try to generalize. Them. This is more abstract than just trial and error. So you move from specific examples to like a broader hypothesis. Your arguments are based on repeated verification, but still not on necessity. For example, after you notice every time you add two even numbers to sum, it's still even. And then start checking them systematically. You try two plus four, 14 plus 18, 100 plus 200, 1000 plus 2000. And then you just couldn't found a counterexample. All of those things you try are strong evidence of your conclusion. And in exams, this is actually also a really helpful technique. For example, you have a question reads, what is the value of one plus three plus five plus all the way to plus 19? And you feel like there's a formula for it, but you don't quite remember it. So you start with smaller sums to see if there's a pattern. You get one plus three equals to four, which is two squared. One plus three plus five equals to nine, which is three squared. And then you have one plus three plus five plus seven equals to 16, which is four squared and so on. So you notice that adding consecutive odd numbers always gives a perfect square. So you came with the conclusion of the sum of the first n odd numbers is n squared. And in our original problem, we're adding the first 10 odd numbers. So based on the pattern, the answer should be 10 squared, which is 100. Without recalling the actual formal theorem, you get the correct answer. When you notice those patterns, it's actually pretty fun. And then you're motivated by curiosity. Lots of time I'm like, did I just discover something? And I try to figure out if there's a counter example. That's when I kind of want to see why is this happening? However, at this level, it's still very limited because the conclusion you came up with is not guaranteed. Counterexamples may exist. I just want to take a quick second and say back in college, I actually only used my iPad to do all the note takings, all my math practice questions and reviewing for exams. The only problem for me was writing on the glass screens of iPad can be not as comfortable and there was a learning curve at the beginning for sure. That's why I was so excited to discover paper like this screen protector, which makes writing and drawing on the iPad just feel like a real paper. And they're also the awesome sponsor of this video. If you ever used a screen protector, you can probably tell
tell why it makes me kind of anxious to put on one because it's pretty frustrating that they always end up with bubbles because of a dust or they go on cricket. And Paper Like just released a Paper Like 3 and one of the best part is their butterfly application system which fixes all of that. They have instructions that's super clear and interactive so it's super super easy to follow. You can align the protector perfectly with the helper tool so everything stays locked in place. No more sliding around at the last moment. It gets rid of bubbles with four layered sheets that create a clean room effect so no dust gets in the way. It uses Nanodot's surface technology to create exactly the right amount of friction against your iPod pencil. So it really feels like writing on premium paper. Back in college, sometimes I end up studying for more than like 10 hours a day. So this really helped me just feel more comfortable and productive. Paperlike offers a 100% or money back guarantee within 100 days of purchase. So I highly, highly recommend checking it out. The link is in the description and thank you so much for if you like for sponsoring this video. And we have our final level, which is deductive reasoning and understand the proof. At this level, you move beyond from guesses and patterns to formal logical reasoning. You can understand and proof statements using definitions, theorems, and logical steps. When I told my boyfriend about this model that I recently read, he said, I feel like there should be another step in between. Instead of just jump directly to the formal proof, there should be a step just like understand it. He's arguing that sometimes lots of students actually understand the concept. They know what exactly is going on and why is it like that, but they don't know how to write the formal proof. They don't know how to even understand some of the notations. That's interesting because my whole argument is that understand the math or just get the math is an intuitive version of formal proof. That may be a little bit abstract. Let me explain really quick. For example, the sum of two even numbers is always even. If I'm trying to explain it to like a five year old, you may say something like, for each even number of candies, all the candies can be set into pairs. So for four, we have two pairs. And for six, we have three pairs of candies. No matter how big the even numbers are, it's always going to be in little pairs of candies. And because everything is in pairs, this sum is still going to be an even number. This seems like a pretty intuitive way to understand a statement. However, it's actually a deductive reasoning and a form of proof in action. Maybe you don't realize it, but when you are explaining, you are using the definition of the even number. An even number is an integer that can be written in 2k, where k is an integer. Each candy is an integer, and then this even number can be represented in a pair of candies. That's the mathematical definition of even numbers. And then you also, sorry, lose a candy. You also use the definition of addition. You're saying at the end, after you added those two even even number together, everything is in pairs, which is again, the definition of even number. So the formal proof will look something like this. So you are following a mathematical proof, but you just didn't realize it because it's not in the proper mathematical language. With all that being said, what looks like a simple intuitive understanding, just actually a very high level deductive reasoning. So when you're thinking, why can I just understand that this, I don't understand math. It's very important to realize that when you say understand math, math, it's actually meaning you have to understand and follow the full logical proof. One of the most important lessons from Dreyfus research is that proof doesn't come naturally. And if you think about mathematicians, they usually follow the three stages. They see it work in a couple examples over and over, then they kind of notice the pattern. So they attempt to have a formal proof of that statement. Now there's still equations and conjectures that are look obviously true, but no one can prove it yet. Just because something works doesn't mean we understand the logical reasoning behind it. We understand how to prove it. And mathematicians sometimes spend years experimenting with examples, and then they will spend a really, really, really long time to figure out what is the actual proof. The same process are in lots of other areas, like science especially. They usually observe patterns, and then they form a hypothesis and test it over and over again to see if something is actually true. But then we look at our school education system and connect to our curriculums. In elementary school, students are normally operate at trial and error stage, level 
one. We count objects, we memorize rules, and we check examples. Math is super hands-on and concrete. By middle school students moving to the second level, they start spotting patterns. And in high school and beyond, that's where the third level is essential. We start introducing more rules, theorems. For example, we're expecting to understand how calculus work right away. Like what is derivative? What is integral? And that's pretty abstract. It's often the first thing they taught. For students who never had the chance to explore patterns and working with functions, areas intuitively, they never had the time to build the understanding of like what calculus really is. That's when a lot of people like, oh, I used to really like math. But in high school and college, they start feeling like, oh, math is not for me because I'm so lost. This is freaking me out. That's because I feel like the way we're introducing math is not following the natural pattern of how people usually build an understanding of something. So one of the key takeaway is if you are a student and you feel like you just don't understand the math, it doesn't mean you're bad at math. You are actually following the natural pathway of reasoning that mathematicians use. Start with examples, noticing patterns, and then you can gradually move forward to a uh, formal reason. I actually made multiple videos on how to get better at math. You can check them out. I'll also link a couple here and in the description. One of the things that I was recommending for people is to stop trying to understand so hard because it's important for you to allocate your time effectively. If you spend all your time on read the textbook over and over again, just trying to understand what the concept even means instead of actually spending the time to do the questions, learn about the examples, and practice questions. So your math score is not as good as you wish it is, even though you spend a lot of time trying to understand math. Highly recommend you to check those videos out. I also have a free math study guide. It's also in the description box. Also check out Paper Like to boost your productivity. I hope this video is helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.